Andy's chippies might be a little weird. The beefiest 4090. Oh, a thousand watts. <laughs> Yikes. Also, uh, Twitter. What's going on? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And uh, today's a spicy one, so buckle up. Apparently, my takes on Twitter are called hot takes. I wasn't aware of this. I thought it was a pretty level-headed thing, but y'all seem to indicate that I... Uh, I'm not going with the consensus here on what Elon Musk is doing on Twitter, so just uh, buckle in. It's going to be a wild ride, which is what some people are in for if they're buying something like an AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. Not a lot of people buying these chips, admittedly, based on sales numbers, but it does seem like there actually might be a concern for you to look out for in case you're looking to buy one of these. One of the things that's being found out as other people are delitting these chips like Der Bauer over on his YouTube channel, they're finding that it's comprised of dual CCD packages, which just means that there's two core complex dies on here. So it's two sets of cores that are fusing together to make one six core. This is not atypical for AMD to do on these chips. We've seen it on the 5600X and previous. So this is not necessarily something AMD is doing wrong. However, if you combine this with some of the reports that we've actually been getting about AMD's performance, and we talked about this in yesterday's episode of Hot News, dual CCD chips might actually be performing worse when paired with a high-end graphics card like something like the 4090. So it's actually turning out that having two CCDs is hurting performance on Windows 11 versus actually having a single CCD, which a lot of people were assuming that's the 7600 is safe because it's a single CCD. But combine that with some of the problems that are cropping up on Windows 11 and Windows 10 with AMD's new set of chips, which AMD, if you remember yesterday's episode of Hot News, essentially just said it's inconsistent. It's not real, okay? It's just... It's growing pains, it's anomalous, it's anecdotal, it's not a real systemic problem, so don't worry about it. And that they'll continue to fix if there's any anomalies that they actually need to fix, but it's on the game developers, it's on Windows, etc. in order to make happen. So AMD not really admitting that this is a real problem. It's not really actually an issue for AMD to put two CCDs in a 7600X, but when you fuse the problems that people are stating they're having and fusing that with there being dual CCDs, there could be a problematic situation on your hands. But are you really buying a 4090 and pairing it with the 7600X? You doing that, Kyler? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there's one. You, you're, are you having problems? Yeah. No, he's struggling. A lot of them. He has a lot of problems turns out. But I know one 4090 Kyler won't be thrown into a 7600X system, and that's the Galax Hall of Fame 4090, because there's a new picture of this, this bad boy, and number one, he can't afford it because he's just an intern, and number two, it's got dual 16-pin power connectors right up here, which means it's capable of delivering over a thousand watts of power, and if you look at this PCB, this thing is insane. It has 28 VRM phases for the GPU and four for the memory. This thing's a honking behemoth, and it's likely going to set some liquid nitrogen overclocking records. I've I've had a few Hoff cards back in my day, mostly GTX 900 series. I had the 1080 Ti Hoff and that was the last one I had because that was always on like the hot news set back in South Africa and it would constantly fall down. I let a, I let a very expensive card constantly hit the ground. Reese would cringe all of the time. It was it was a big problem. So I, I ended up selling that for like a hundred bucks because I was like, I don't know if this works, but uh, it's a Hoff card, so you can try to enjoy it. Anyways, the 4090 Hoff card, gonna be a beef and honker, and let's beef some honks on crypto stonks. That rhymed. I don't like what I said there, though. Bitcoin's up a little bit to be at 2455. Ethereum's up a little bit to be at 1576, and Dogecoin continuing the surge of following Elon Musk's rise to glory. It's up 13% on the day to be at 14 cents. Dogecoin to a dollar soon? I don't know. But you want to save some dollars, Reese got the UFD deals for you. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna force this into the UFD deal segment. Hey buddy, I'm filming hot news and I just I need your reaction. Remember that 1080 Ti Hall of Fame card we had that used to sit on like the back of the hot news set that would constantly fall over and hit the ground? Can you just when you start UFD deals, can you give us a reaction to how you felt about me doing that with such a beautiful, expensive card? Thanks. So last night I received a text at exactly 1022 p.m. from Brett asking if I remember how I felt about him placing our gorgeous Galax 1080 Ti Hall of Fame up on the most unstable, janky shelf right behind the couch of the first official hot news set. I do remember, Brett. Do you also remember me saying, hmm, this doesn't seem safe. Maybe we should like stick it down or anchor it somehow because I can foresee something bad happening here. But 
you know, no, it's fine. It's fine. It wasn't fine. It wasn't fine the first time, or the second time, or the third time, or the fourth time that that card fell and left the office in like complete silence. I will forever remember the Hoff and its legacy that was tainted by by the ground, I guess. But uh, enough about my uh, my sad feelings regarding a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card that's never got to see a dignified death. I, I'm here about the deals. I've got some deals for you. And I'm going to jump in with the Enemax Liquimax 3 360mm ARGB AIO CPU liquid cooler. This actually comes bundled with a 3-pack of Enemax's HF120 RGB fans. And you can grab the set for $99.99, which is 28% off. And next up, we have the Razer Huntsman Elite Gaming Keyboard. It's a classic of the Razer lineup. Comes with Chroma RGB, a magnetically attachable wrist rest, and a dedicated media dial. You can find this going for only $99.99 as well, which is a whole 50% off. And don't forget, you can find these seals and more linked in the video description. I'm a hand off back to bread for the rest of the hard news but remember the half normally reese and i are out of sync for ufd deals but today i forced the sync which is what elon musk is doing when he went into twitter he had a sync that I carried in anyways let's talk about some good stuff with spacex turns out that they might be ready for orbital flight when it comes to their starship in december nasa saying that there's a couple of major space flights that are taking place by spacex with the first one happening in early december which given the progress that spacex has been making on the starship system it does look like they might actually be ready to go orbital with that and Elon Musk taking Twitter to the moon, trying to increase the revenue. We talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that seemed like the indication was Elon Musk was going to charge $20 for Twitter's verification program. But now, after some debate with Stephen King, of all people, he's dropping the price to $8 with Elon Musk confirming this over on Twitter himself, essentially saying Twitter's current lords and peasant system for who has or doesn't have a blue check mark is BS. Power to the people, blue for $8. $8 a month. Price adjusted by country proportionate to purchasing power parity. You will also get priority in replies mentioned in search, which is essential to defeat spam slash scam. Ability to post long video and audio, half as many ads, and paywall bypass for publishers willing to work with us. This will also give Twitter a revenue stream to reward content creators. There will be a secondary tag below the name for someone who is a public figure, which is already the case for politicians. So essentially, this is actually going against a lot of what the initial thought was that people who already were verified we're gonna have to pay to keep it, but it was not a way to get into the verification program. That's the, the exact opposite of what's happening. Now you have to pay eight dollars a month, and you get you get the blue check mark. It's now just purely a status symbol, and anybody who is a public figure will have a second thing denoting whether or not they are a public figure. Which I just I'm way more against it now. Kyler, how do you feel about this? He's gonna beat it up. I think that a lot of things I was hearing in the comments of yesterday's episode of Hot News was that uh, Twitter has a problem with blue check marks being a status symbol for people, to which my response was, this doesn't eliminate that. That actually just exacerbates the problem because now it's going to be those who do have and those who do not have not. Those who are willing to pay money for Twitter and those who are not willing to pay money for Twitter, those who actually want to have priority in searches and replies and actually be algorithmically pushed and those who do not. This actually widens the gap and makes it a little bit more severe, whereas previously it was supposed to at least be an identity verification. Now it seems like it's being partnered with whether or not you're going to be willing to pay for your social media platform, which I just have to say right now, based on the things that they're giving you, uh, Ability to post long video and audio. I have YouTube and podcast platforms for that. I have Facebook for that. I can do it everywhere else. I don't pay for it. Half as many ads. I pay $10 a month on YouTube and I get no ads. What are you talking about? Like half as many ads. That's not even a good deal. The, and then and then saying that you're going to be algorithmically prioritized if you pay Twitter money, I get it. But at the same time, this is a far cry from the free speech claim that Elon Musk was giving out there. It's no longer free speech for everybody. It's free speech for those who can pay and then you get prioritized if you are prioritizing Twitter with your bank account. I just, I don't think this lines up with what Twitter as a platform provides value as. This is only going to continue to widen the gap. It's gonna be even more of a status symbol to have that blue check mark because it says, yeah, I have the disposable income and I don't care about my money enough to actually put $8 a month into Twitter in order to make this viable. I just don't see any benefit to me as a consumer to actually pay for this. And that's 
strange. It's just, it's, it's not providing anything for the user and it's only taking away from a system that already exists. I've seen discussions with a lot of different content creators like MKBHD or Hank Green talking about how this really makes it harder for identity verification to go through. It creates a system like super followers where like it's a pay to play system and not something that's based on free equitable access to all. It's just spelled out right there. You get priority. It's not equitable anymore for everybody who uses it. It's only whether or not you're going to willy willingly part with your cash. I personally, as of where I stand right now, am not going to pay the $8 a month. I really don't care about a blue check mark. I think the people who do will gladly pay the $8 a month, which again, is part of the problem. If it's a problem as a status symbol, they're going to pay for it if they believe it's a status symbol. Like the people who don't care about the check mark as a status symbol don't want to pay because they don't think it's a status symbol. So you're you're just creating the same problem, but more severely. That's my take on it. Let me know your take on it down below in the comments. Keep it civil, keep it respectful. Twitter, oh boy, it's a mess, which it also appears to be behind the scenes. Uh, according to reports, the engineers who are actually working on Twitter have been forced to work eight, 84 hour weeks, 12 hour shifts, seven days a week in order to hit Elon Musk's aggressive deadlines for changing everything that's going on with Twitter in order to make him and his needs satisfied, which, Elon's must needs are robust, aren't they, Kyler? Who did what? Elon Musk, his needs are robust. He's got, he needs strong ones. He needs strong ones, Kyler says. And he's the only uh, board member on Twitter right now, which makes a lot of sense because it was a private takeover. This is actually part of the process of doing it. So there are reports of like, oh no, Elon Musk is the only one in control, but it typically is a temporary thing if he should decide to implement a new board of directors, whether or not he actually does remains to be seen. But you know what company is actually gonna give you more value without changing anything? And I hate that I'm doing this, but it's it's such a good parody of like why things make sense when you're charging your consumers. Amazon is gonna be expanding their library of prime music to be 100 million songs and ad-free podcasts as opposed to the 2 million songs that it is currently because they realize that people really just didn't care about the 2 million free songs. And instead of charging people more, instead of actually trying to get you to incentivize for paying this separately, they're just rolling it into the same pay package to make it worth your while. This is the same thing with YouTube taking away 4K. You're taking away something that used to be free while delivering no extra value to the consumer. If you want people to pay for your products and services, make sure it's very clear what they're getting out of it. And what people get out of the PlayStation 5 in just one week is gonna be God of War Ragnarok. I'm so freaking excited for that, aren't I, Kyler? What's God of War? You, sir, are a sassy pants. Well, the PlayStation 5 sold 25 million units according to the latest quarterly report by Sony, indicating that they sold about 3.3 million in the last quarter. They're a little bit off track to hit the 18 million that they're supposed to sell throughout this year, so they might have to ramp it up for the holiday season, but it does seem like Sony is supply chain constrained when it comes to the PlayStation 5 sales. However, uh, they're still they're still selling a decent volume of them. 25 million, that's a quarter of 100 million, obviously, but 100 million is kind of where like the console has actually surpassed all of the expectations. So, uh, I mean, we're just, we're, we're close to seeing that happen. Good job, Sony, and good job, OBS, for adding AV1 encoding into their latest update. You can check it out in OBS Studio 28.1, but one of the specific things you need to read is that it's only for the RTX 40 series cards from NVIDIA and not for the Intel cards that also support AV1 encoding, which is the big bummer because, I mean, that it does seem like Intel's cards are really good for content creation. If OBS could support the AV1 encoding on that, I'd be a happy camp but you could also maybe check out the ARC A380 from Acer over on Amazon because it does look like those are starting to pop up. It doesn't have a power connector, it just is powered off of the 75 watt uh, PCI Express power, which is kind of in interesting. There's no price or release date, but it's a two pack. Look at that, you can buy two of them. I don't know for how much, but it's a two pack of GPUs. What a deal. Kyler, can I get a what a deal? Look at them go. And according to reports, AMD not gonna go very far, according to a new investment firm, essentially saying that they're gonna cut the chip makers rating on their stock because they don't believe that AMD, especially with their partnership with TSMC is actually gonna be able to keep pace with Intel, especially if there's more trade wars that are going to go on between the United States and China with TSMC being caught in the crossfires, as well as the fact that TSMC's three nanometer node is not looking too hot and has several delays. It looks like Intel actually might be on the forefront of that train, making sure that they're marching forward with their own fabric 
fabrication facilities. It's not, it's not a great piece of news for AMD. It's also by an investment firm, which is like how much do they actually know about the technical side? But it does, it does bear a problem that I've just kind of thought in the back of my mind when it comes to the stock situation, which feel free to tell me I'm an idiot in the comments, but like, Apple has a huge valuation, right? Nvidia has a huge valuation. AMD has a huge valuation. Their entire business model essentially is dependent on TSMC actually being able to produce the chips that they're able to produce. If TSMC goes down, Apple can't make their chips, either the M1, M2 chips or anything in their iPhone. They'd have to look for another foundry in order to be able to do it, like global foundries. But nobody's really kept pace with TSMC besides Intel. And so if something happens with TSMC, like let's not even say it's the obvious thing on the table. Let's just say that there's something horrible that happens with TSMC's opera. It gets corrupted somehow. TSMC is just blinked out of existence. Apple, what what value do they have at that point? What are they actually delivering without their processors? What are they actually delivering without the ability to run the things that they actually sell? TSMC, tremendously valuable. If TSMC falls behind, so does everybody else. Tell me I'm an idiot down below in the comments and we'll be back here tomorrow, not with the hot news. We're gonna be live streaming AMD's announcement of their upcoming RDNA 3 GPU. So uh, we'll be live here 4 p.m. for the AMD announcement. Get your bones collected. We'll see you here for hot news it's on, on Friday. Bye.